Hey there, my name is uh, Per Schoforce. Um, I know it's a little odd name and makes perfect sense to my native Swedish, but um, I'm here in the States and I've been here now for almost 30 years, so I can assure you that I've spelt that many times. Um, maybe it's easier to remember me as the Price Whisper. And the Price Whisper is nothing that um, I invented myself. Um, the story here is that I, I was called the Price Whisper so many times that I eventually decided to um, to adopt it simply, right? And um, I've been called the Price Whisper so many times because I have become a thought leader when it comes to product and service pricing. Maybe the thought leader even, you know? I, I take a very different um, take on, on pricing than, than um, most um, most companies do and, and, uh, and others. And um, um, I, I look at pricing from a very holistic point of view because there are actually ways that you can increase your prices and you can increase your sales at the same time. And, um, and that's what I'm trying to do. Um, so anyway, um, in this series, I'm talking about different pricing strategies. And um, you, again, you want to have a pricing strategy that makes sure that you can increase your sales and you can increase your, your, um, your, your price and your profit at the same time. And, and that with a, um, a common name is called pricing power. Now, um, the, uh, I'm reviewing different kinds of pricing strategies here. And today I decided that we're going to talk about something called EVP. Uh, economic value pricing. Now, economic value pricing sounds like a really good idea, and um, but if you if you actually start to look under the hood, if you like, it turns out to be another one of these constructs from academia that has nothing to do with the reality. So, so here's the theory about economic value pricing, and this is really uh, something that is used in, in business to business pricing, not really in consumer pricing. The, <clears throat> the idea here is that you as the seller, together with the uh, buyer, uh, make a very detailed understanding um, or analyze the, really the buyer's process in, in detail in such a way that um, you can assess the economic value of what the buyer is going to buy from from, from you. Now, um, uh, good idea? Yeah, good idea. But here's where it breaks down, you know. First off, um, do you really think that a buyer is going to open the kimono to you, the seller, in such a detail that they will expose their vulnerability, that they will tell you everywhere where they have hidden um, uh, hidden skeletons in the closet that you can leverage as a buyer to increase your prices? I don't think so. I've, it's, it's sort of funny, you know, when I, um, when I speak to people and I, I, I talk about this economic value pricing and, and I sort of summarize it um, the way I just did, <laughs> Seasoned CEOs, they just laugh. They say this is <laughs> this this has nothing to do with reality, you know. This has nothing to do with reality. So, um uh, and and even even in the unlikely event that the buyer is gonna open that kimono in such a way that you as the seller can understand in detail the economic value that you um you provide to to, to the buyer. There's so many um, assumptions. There's so much you don't know. You know, let's say for, you know, for argument's sake that you're going to sell a company a new um, CRM system, right? Every company has a CRM system of some sort. <clears throat> um, and and um, here you're going to then convince the buyer that your new CRM system is going to have some kind of economic impact to the buyer's business. But there's so many unknowns, you know, it's not only, I mean, how quick is the installation really going to take and how much is, is, is it really going to take uh, cost, right? How, what is the cost of, of training um, the staff on the new um, CRM system? What is the adoption rate going to be on that new CRM system? 
we know that most ERP systems um, eventually fails because um, employees, people don't want to use them. They want to continue to work the, the way they work, uh, you know, from day one. And, and they don't want to, um, they don't want to change their, 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 their way of working. So um, it's, it's very hard to install a new, um, a new um, um, product like that CRM system, that new CRM system, and, and, and get uh, adoption. Of course, many will adopt it, some will not, you know, and they're going to continue to use whatever they used in, in the past, you know. And um, so that's one hurdle. The next hurdle then, of course, is to understand how much better is this going to be in monetary value? Does it mean that they're going to be able to contact two more potential clients every day? Does it mean that they can solve three more um, customer service issues per day or not? We don't know. You have to make an assumption, right? An assumption best based on a guess, right? So um, and 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 then of course you have the the issue of of how long is the life going to be on that CRM system? What are the um, um, what are the updates that's going to come? What is the new features? How are they going to be um, adopted and 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 so forth? And how much value do they uh, they bring? as opposed to the updates and, and, and new features and functions of the existing CRM system. And as a seller, you wouldn't know, right? You wouldn't know. And, and there's obviously more to this. I mean, what, 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 is the, um, what is the infrastructure need? Do you need more servers? Do you need um, higher quality servers? Can you outsource the whole thing? Is it, is it gonna be hosted internally or externally? They're just a lot of questions, and 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 um, even if you like, I said, even if the buyer is is ex exposing their vulnerability, if they're exposing those uh, skeletons in their closets, um, you make so many assumptions that um, that at the end of the day, uh, the economic value that your new CRM system is going to uh, give the the seller is um, is a guess. Right. So and, and 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 there's more when it comes to to economic value pricing. Assume now that the the the, the buyer exposed um, his his or her company to the to the detail that you um, that 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 you want, so you could make those assumptions. Assuming that the assumptions or guesses is reasonably right. So you have a number that will tell you the economic value of your new CRM system. Then of course comes the next question. So you have an economic value is a number. How much of that is you going to take as your price? Are you going to take 5%? Are you going to take 10%? Are you going to take 50%? I don't know. And you don't know either. So we're back in guessing or negotiation with a with a client, right? So, um, so suddenly you, you you don't have a price of what you're going to sell, and you you're left with a situation that um, some companies do. They they say we send out our uh, our salespeople and they're taking uh, the, the best price they can get. No, they don't. I can assure you that they're underpricing because a salesperson always believes that the lower price is going to lead to the easiest sale, which is true sometimes, but not always. So at the end of the day, when you've gone through this whole process of trying to understand the economic value, trying to assess um, what um, what benefit, economic benefit your client will have for your new product, um, you you then going to have a salesperson who is going to be very, very um, inclined to accept 
a low price because that's what he or she believes is is the best way of closing the deal. So chances are in the end that you leave money on the table. Chances are significant that you leave money on the table. So um, economic value uh, pricing, great idea, but it comes from academia. It has nothing to do with business reality. And so you better use other pricing um, methods. And there's really only one. There's only one pricing method that always going to lead to the best business result. And that is to understand what, um, what clients are willing to pay. But not only that, understand um, how you can influence that willingness to pay um, in such a way that, that um, their willingness to buy and their willingness to pay goes up. And there's lots of re ways you can do that that I'm going to talk about uh, later on in this series. So, so again, um, don't believe academia when they come with uh, discussions about economic value pricing. Uh, find better way of pricing and then... Um, there are many be better ways actually so anyway I hope you found this of, of interest and um, uh, also that you you found this a little bit thought-provoking and um, and I'm looking forward to see you on 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 the next episode of this series so thank you very much and uh, I'll see you soon again bye